name is Pastor Alan Joe Miner. It's a glorious day to come before you and share the Word of God. Today we're going to be sharing about faithfulness. And we need to understand um, that God is a good God. So this beautiful day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And before we go into um, sharing the word, I just want to encourage you that God has a good plan for you. The plans I have for you are for good and not for evil. During this time and during the shakings, people are caught up or lost in a place wondering, is God good? Did God cause the problems? Did God cause the challenges? Did God cause all the struggles that we're going through? But I want to encourage you with one thing that Jesus Christ said, in this world, you will have tribulation. However, there is hope. Be of good cheer, he said, for I have overcome the world. So today we're going to share something from the book of Luke chapter 16. And I believe that it's going to encourage you and also open up your understanding a little deeper for you to understand what's God's cause and God's purpose for you. So in the book of Luke chapter 16, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to go straight to verse number 11. It says this. Let's start from 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest also with much. For if you have not been trustworthy in handling even worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Let me repeat that. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. Today we want to share on the dealings of God with us. We need to understand that God gives us pictorials or pictures of who he is in order for us to understand on how to relate with him. One of the pictorials God gives us is of a manager. There was a manager who gave talents and he gave five to one, two to the other one, and one talent to the third servant. So these three servants each got talents according to their ability. So we usually have this question that how come that one has more than me or that one has less than me or we get into the problems of trying to compare ourselves with each other. But that is not what God God wants us to take care of what has been placed in our hands. For example, the man with talents took it and ran, traded it, and got five more. The one with two talents took it, ran, traded it, and got two more. And the one with one talent took it and buried it in the ground. Now today, we need to understand that this is playing out on every level, be it in the governmental sector, be it in the financial sector, be it in the spiritual sector, be it in the family sector, we are all endowed or blessed with talents by the Almighty God. But many times we get caught up in a rat race of compa comparing one ourselves with others or listening or yielding to what other people have said about us. And we spend a lifetime trying to prove ourselves to people who don't even like you. You enter into a rat race of trying to drive a better car than so and so. Not knowing maybe he got it on loan or it's borrowed or a better house than somebody else or a better neighborhood than somebody else or even a, a, your, my children should do better or I should do better. And we get caught up trying to catch up with people who are not even in our lane. 
we need to understand something. That a man who's called in a long distance race and another one who's called in a hundred meters race will all run but very differently. The man in the long race, his greatest training is in endurance. The one in the short race, his greatest training is in the thrust of power. In other words, he wants to build his muscles to be able to dash very fast, accumulate as much, as, as much oxygen as he can and cause there to be a mighty thrust through the finish line as fast as he can. But the one with endurance has to pace himself. Could it be that you are called in the 100 uh, meter race and you're comparing yourself with one who's called in the maybe the five kilometer race. If you prepare or compare yourself with him or with her, you will find yourself lost in this world, trying to impress people who don't even care, buying a house you don't even need, or driving what you can't even afford. And what if you can afford it? Do you want to just be a statistic that you drive this or you drive that. I usually say that something. It's not what you drive that really matters. It is not the car. It is the man or the woman in the car. And it's not the house, but it's the people in the house. What do you mean? This is what I mean. If you have, you're a great critic you're full of, of emotion, negative emotion and negative energy. And everywhere you go, you go criticizing or tearing people down. Or you go hurting people and speaking ill of people. It doesn't matter what you drive. If you drive whatever model of car, maybe it's the latest, most expensive, and you drive from point A to B, you have just transferred your negative energy from point A to point B. Therefore, I say it's not the car, but the man in the car. What if, <coughs> what if there is a person full of energy, gracious, kind, full of kind words, inspires, motivates, lends a hand where needed, and he drives that car? What we're doing, we are transporting that person who's full of motivation, full of life, full of help, and full of inspiration from point A to point B. Therefore, whatever talent or opportunities God has put in you, maximize them by stopping, number one, from comparing yourself with even, even your siblings, even your relatives, even your neighbors or your friends. Take time to think, what have I really been called to do? Or what have I really been called, where have I been called to impact? Or who have I been called to impact? In life, there are three major principles that inform and bring transformation in the world. Number one, it's a principle of legacy. Principle of legacies, what will I leave behind? What change will I leave behind? Many of us prepare the future for our children, but we forget to prepare our children for the future. So you leave multi-million empire or million dollar empire or resources or land or whatever you wouldn't leave for children who've not been prepared to handle it. And it's, it becomes hurtful towards them. Some of us have not invested enough in the children who we really want to carry on our legacy or to who are going to speak of our legacy or define our legacy. 
So what have you deposited in them? Rather than what you should be asking yourself, what have I deposited in them? Not just what have I kept for them. Because if you deposit a lot in them, you won't have to keep a lot for them. Why? Because if your child has been filled with wisdom, with insight, with revelation, with understanding, you've invested in them. You've taught them not just the difference of a tomato and a potato, but you've taught them the values of sharing, the values of building others, the values of humility. What they don't learn from school, humility, sacrifice, placing others before themselves, building others. These values will empower your child to be number one, a great team player, or your mentees, great team players. And we're struggling because we have great people with great resources, but little was invested in them. They don't understand that the, 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 the privilege came with responsibility. Power came with understanding of how to impact the society. So I challenge you in matters of legacy. Try and find out what am I leaving behind? What am I impacting? Who am I impacting in this society in this time? I said three principles. Number one, legacy. Number two is what, what impact will you create in your society? Legacy is what you will leave for posterity or for the future. But the question, second question is this. What impact right now in your generation are you going to have or do you have? We need to ask ourselves that question. What impact do we have? Or what impact are we creating? What do people say about us when we're not there? When we're not there, will people miss us? Or when we're not there, will people rejoice? Or when we're not there? So what do people say about you? They say it's measured. Most of the impact you create in society is measured when you take a short, uh, a, sh a short trip and then we see how people, maybe to a far away place and see how people will miss you. And I always say this, great impact in people's lives is usually felt not by elevating self. Do people say, oh, that person is rich, number one. Or that person is great. Or that person is powerful. And if you're great, or they say you're great, why are you great? Are you great because of your powerful, great mansion? Are you great because of your many houses? Are you great because of your of, of great promise? Or do people say you're great because you impacted them? You see, greatness is measured in many, in many ways. But, but what, what greatness does is, is the greatest that glorifies God? This is greatness. That you become great by making others great. Greatness is not you are the only star shining and the rest are looking up to you like a savior. No. Greatness is measured, or the greatness God wants, in this second principle of the impact you create in society, is greatness that people can say, they made me great. They lifted me. They helped me up. It's not enough to get accolades and people to clap because of your achievements. If your achievements don't lift others, don't make others great, don't empower societies around you, what's the need of being the only billionaire? among a million poor people. It's better to be a millionaire among millionaires than the whole society. Because even when you're a billionaire, you'll need roads to drive in your fantastic car. 
You will need an airport to, f to, to, to land your, your private jet. You will need security to keep your home. And therefore, it's better to be a millionaire among millionaires. It's better to build others. It's better to make others great. The pa great Patrick called Abraham. God told him, I will bless all families of the world through you. So the second measure of greatness I want to us to think about is, how are we impacting society? Is it enough for us to hold billions in foreign accounts, which you will never use in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years? Is it enough to buy land, thousands and ten, tens of thousands of acres, and just keep it, and don't, you don't cause any impact with it? Is it wise for us, even in the city or in other places all over the world, just hold and believe that we are securing the future for our children? No. If you want to build your children, take them to a children's home. Show them that there are other people who don't have the same privilege. Teach them to handle that privilege with responsibility. Teach your mentees to handle it with responsibility. Teach them that when your neighbor and second neighbor are living comfortable, then your house will be safer. Teach them that community which is empowered is great community because once you have 50 people who are all blessed and are looking out for each other, it's more powerful than one family eh, which is lording over everybody or one family which lords over a few. But if every family is blessed, and I'm not talking about just splitting and sharing the money equally. No, I'm talking about lending a hand. So the first principle I said is legacy. What will you leave behind for our posterity for our future? Number two, what impact are you creating in your society? What, how many wells can you say you've dug? E everything is not government's business. Some of them is your own business. How many wells do you build in your backyard, in your home, home village, or where you come from? How many lives do you change? How many people do you school? And for you, you say, okay, I don't need to do so. Well, then that greatness is not really greatness. Yeah. So greatness is defined by someone who makes others great because they are great. Or you're great because you make others great. So number three, the third principle is whatever you do, does it glorify God? So the three thresholds of measuring if you're really impactful in life. The legacy you leave, the impact you have for your own generation, and also, do you glorify God in whatever you do? So today, when you go out there, are you going to spend time asking yourself, all right, am I glorifying God in what I do? What do you mean by glorifying God? I want to live for myself, you say. Well, let me tell you something. When I say glorify God, I mean whatever you do, does it bring life? Does it bring help? Does it inspire others? Does it empower others? Does it make others great? Does it help you? Does it help your children? Because look at, I want to show you a mystery of the earth. The sun gives light and uses it's the, all, the whole system of the solar system is created to the sun to give heat and light to the earth. The earth receives that and the plants receive that and they create food and they release oxygen. We in turn breathe in the oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide which is needed by the plants. We are interdependent. So the whole system operates this way. Number one. The sun gives, the moon gives light. The waters team up with the earth to produce plants, so they give. So if you look at everything on the earth, it gives. Even the waste from animals is used to empower or to nourish or to create more nutrition for the plants. What happens when you don't give? Whatever doesn't give becomes, it becomes almost constipated. So this is what I'm challenging you. Whatever, whoever glorifies God gives, gives 
to their community, gives to the society, creates ideas, builds lives. And I want to break this down for us to understand what, who or how we glorify God. Number one, God operates in times and seasons. God operates in times and seasons. Because I'm sure you're out there asking, if God is so great, God is so good. I prayed for this, I prayed for that. It has not come through, it has not, not happened. Well, there are many reasons it may not have happened. But one principle which can help us understand the workings of God is number one. God operates in times and seasons. And I'll, let me show you this picture of a father. A seven-year-old son comes and tells you, Dad or Mom, I want to get married. The dad says, when? He says, now. As a parent, you look at him and say, no. I don't think it's the right time. So this is the time for you to develop, develop yourself, grow. And maybe when you're closer to 30 or 25 and above, I think when, you, when you're a bit more developed, then that will make sense. So number one, God, like a father, the same way that a father would do that, there are things we ask God for or want to walk in, but it's not the right time. So it doesn't mean he's refused, but it could be that's not time. Another principle is that God operates in the principle of process. God processes people in order for them to enter or become what they're meant to become. What do you mean? I mean, there is no great leader God uses who he does not process. There is no leader or great leader God uses whom he does not process. And I'm sure you're asking, what do you mean by process? This is what it means. God does not trust anyone he has not built. They, there is something called the school of God. God's school. God has to take you and teach you and train you on how, on how to handle his issues the way he would want you to handle them. Let me give you an example. Moses is greatly learned and mighty in speech from Egypt. At 40, he almost tries to lead a rebellion which backfires, causes someone to die. And he was thrown into the wilderness and he took off, took flight in the wilderness. He took 40 years in the wilderness. Then God came to him and God taught him or trained him. Remember, Moses did not use any of his learning <laughs> to deliver the children of Israel. He solely depended, depended on the training and the teaching God taught him to go deliver the children of Israel. So if men train you, and it's good for men to train you, it will be great. However, you cannot be trained by men and fail to be trained by God and expect for God to trust you with what he has for you. God has to process you. You ask, that's just one case. No, look at um, Abraham. Abraham goes through tests and God confirms him and proves him and finally becomes a father of na many nations after years. So God did what? God trained him. So God works in times and seasons. God processes the people who he's going to use. God pours himself in them. God teaches them his ways and his principles in order for them to understand how to handle issues. Number three, God will also meet you at your place of maturity or development. Like I said earlier, if a child of seven years, 12 years comes and tells you, Daddy, I want to get married, you won't agree because you believe he doesn't have the development, he doesn't have the maturity, he doesn't have the mind to understand what a marriage is. So you as a father, you will stall that until maybe he's over 20 or 25. So what makes you think God will not stall what he wants to give you 
or what he wants to do with you or do in you until you're developed either spiritually or holistically to handle that matter. So what are you saying in, in today? I'm trying to teach you by saying this. Be faithful in the little things God has placed in your hands. Learn to take the little God has placed in your hand and walk like it's a diamond, a gemstone. What talents are those? The talent of time. The talent of your gift. The talent of possibilities and opportunities are before you. Don't dream of a billion dollars when you have one dollar or ten dollars and you don't want to take it, maximize it. To do what? Three, to make sure whatever you do will glorify God. Number, number two, number one will glorify God. Number two will impact your generation. And number three, it will leave a legacy so that even your children will say, oh, my dad or my mom, they did something great. So what I'm sharing with you today is to tell you, God loves, God is dreaming of making you great. God wants to make you great. In fact, when God builds you, he builds you for not even what you're thinking about. He builds you for exceedingly, abundantly above what you could ask, think, or imagine. God has great plans for you. As I began by saying, the plans God has for you are great plans. The plans are good plans. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a great future and a hope. But today I'm encouraging you. Every opportunity that God has given your hand, look at it on a different level. If you're serving somewhere, serve with all your heart. If you're praying, pray with all your heart. If you give, give with all your heart. If you live, live well. Live like a king. You don't need to have a million dollars to live like a king. No. But use every opportunity to impact your generation. Positively. Use every opportunity to glorify God wherever you go. How do I glorify God? Whatever I do, let it be that which is pleasing, that which impacts other people, that which en enhances society, that which makes other people great. Because in making other people great, you will achieve your own greatness. Because whoever goes around planting seeds, seeds of hope, seeds and fruits, seeds of apples, will eventually have trees full of apples. So when you make others great, when you impact others, one day and soon that day is coming, you'll have a flood of greatness. So my, my encouragement to you today is this. When you go out, lift your head up. There is hope for tomorrow. It doesn't matter how it looks like things are not working. I tell you there is hope for tomorrow. These principles are supreme. They govern the universe. So do number one, give with all your heart. Impact your generation. Glorify God in the process and leave a lasting legacy. So, full with this little will be entrusted. I can't wait to see the other side entrusted with much. Transforming nations, transforming lives, and transforming communities. So in this one minute is remaining, I want to speak to every one of you who's gone through issues and you're stuck somewhere in life. And you feel time passed you by. Opportunities passed you by. You don't live where you wanted to live. You don't have what you wanted to have. You've missed your season. You've missed your time. I'm here to tell you that at this time, in the name of Jesus, may God reach out to you right there. May God remember you. May God turn your circumstances around. Call on to him and he'll pick you there. Like Moses behind the desert who was forgotten. When it looks like his time was gone. Extremity. Is man's opportunity. So I speak to you that receive a divine turnaround. Receive a new beginning. And if you dreamt and your dream was shattered, dream again in Jesus' name. May God transform your situation, your life. May God change your name. May God make you great. Be faithful in that little thing and start walking to the path of greatness. There is great hope. There is a great future. Plans which will prosper you, which will make you great. In the name of Jesus, anything in your life that is opposing that greatness, we speak to it to move in Jesus' name. So receive your greatness. It may come as a seed, but plant that seed. You will eventually get a harvest of greatness. So I decree that God remembers you and turns your situation upside down. Even when it seems that you're forgotten, you will be remembered. In Jesus' name. There is a day the book of remembrance was open. And it's open towards you today.
So receive your visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. And may the power of the Holy Spirit overshadow you wherever you are now. May God turn around that situation and circumstance. And may God make your name great. May God begin with you wherever you are. Pick up, dust yourself off if you're fallen. Shake yourself off. Get up. And keep keeping on until you go to the other side where you receive the full harvest of your greatness. This is I, Pastor Alan Jomina, saying you can do it. God will help you do it. And God will empower you to do it in Jesus' name. God bless you in a mighty way. Amen. Mm -hmm.